As I've gotten closer to the release of my indie Metroidvania, Dewdrop Dynasty, I've finally been able to add things to the game that I've been wanting to do for years. Things like creating towns, quest lines, collectibles, and most recently, a gun upgrade system. Now, one of the core mechanics in Dewdrop is the ability to gun jump. But outside the first initial upgrade you get to your gun, not much changes with it. So I want to create a system that would add some variation. Things like increasing its damage, range, or even speed, adding more recoil to your gun so you jump higher, or even bullets that just can catch enemies on fire. And the way this has been approached in recent years with games like Hollow Knight has been by using Paper Mario's badge system. Basically, you can equip these little badges or charms to change the way that the game plays and feels. I personally really enjoy these systems because it allows the player to get clever and come up with some cheese setups to absolutely destroy tough bosses. The only downside is that a lot of modern Metroidvanias are doing this right now. So I wanted to create a system that stood out from the rest. And my mind immediately gravitated towards Mega Man Battle Network's NAV customizer system. Essentially, you could equip these badges to your character, but instead of just using points, they actually take up space on a grid. And each chip, as they're called in Mega Man, has a different shape and size, with more powerful chips being harder to place. So basically, it's almost like a puzzle. You have to Tetris pieces together to come up with a cool setup. And this is the idea I came up with a couple years ago when I was working on the Kickstarter for the game. Unfortunately, I had to put it on the shelf as I wanted to prioritize the content of the game first. But recently, as I've been playtesting the game, I noticed how sorely needed this system was. So I challenged myself to see if I could fully implement this system in three days. And I did. I quickly mocked up some artwork and then I made it so that you could place and remove tiles. And for those who are curious, I'm using an array system. So I actually tested it by printing the results first and then I drew the artwork on the screen. I added a little preview to show the shape of the object that you're trying to place. And if it's overlapping another one, it turns red. I then made a little inventory system for your gun modifications so you can see them on the right. And when you place them, they're gone. Wow. I quickly realized too that you should be able to readjust and move them, so I added that in as well. So you essentially can rearrange these to your heart's content. Finally, I added custom artwork for all the different mods. I then redesigned the inventory system so it was more of a grid, and that allowed space for me to add descriptions and to show if something was equipped or not when you hover over it. Now, this is cool and all, but it doesn't really matter if it doesn't affect the player's gun. So that's what I focus on next. I added recoil boost, bigger bullets, faster bullets, silly bullets like flame bullets where you can burn enemies, and I even made a duck bullet modification where every time you shoot, it's just a duck quacking. You're welcome. All in all, the system was incredibly easy to implement, and I'm kind of kicking myself for not adding it sooner. But here's where I need your help. If any of you have some cool, creative, or wacky gun modification ideas, please let me know in the comments down below, because there's definitely room to add a lot more, and I think it's going to add a lot of fun strategy and variation to the game. Now, there's two things I want to go back and improve upon later on, and that's being able to upgrade your grid. I kind of like the idea of your grid being really small or maybe a strange shape, and if you bring money or special items to a gunsmith NPC, he'll make your grid larger, allowing you to equip more mods. And finally, the only other minor thing I would like to add to this is the ability to rotate tiles, because I think they'll allow for more customization and creativity with builds. Now, working on a gun mod system isn't the only thing I've done. Like I said, it actually only ended up taking me three days, which was awesome. Where a lot of my time has gone into recently is creating NPCs and new types of interactions. I create a shopkeeper system where you can talk to an NPC, and when you buy all their stuff, they say, hey, we're sold out. I also added reactions, so if you do something to an NPC or in the world around it, it can react to it. Um, this is the most gruesome example of that. I'm, I'm sorry, basically. And also the ability to give money and items to an NPC, like this flower, for example, who's who needs your money. He needs it to feel better. Wait, what? Another thing I've been working on is revamping some old area artwork. Uh, some locations in the game look beautiful and they're polished, and in my mind, they're 99% complete. But other locations are very underdeveloped. Fortunately for me, it's only a few locations that need worked on. Giant's Grotto being one of them. Here's what it looked like originally. Here's what it looked like later on. And here's what it looks like now. I've, I kind of got back to the, you know, grotto part of Giant's Grotto. I've also been working on towns, which really kind of solve two problems. One is adding to the lore of the game. And the other is giving the player's wallet a purpose. You can finally buy upgrades and cosmetics or redeem collectibles and even do some quest lines, which is pretty cool. Now, I've also been working on debugging tools quite a bit. I noticed that the way I took screenshots before or recorded GIFs was, was just painful. So I created my own system so I could take screenshots, instantly see them, record GIFs, take the best frames from them, and then use this little script to compile it into a video. It's uh, it's pretty sweet, actually. And I don't know why I did this like a million years ago, but I added a no clipping debug feature so I can quickly get around the map when I need to. And this also has come really in handy with placing artwork because I could see how the parallax is working and if anything's looking glitchy. So as always, I continue to be very vague and not share too much about the game 
theme because I don't want to spoil it for you. But hopefully that gives you a little taste of what's been going on the past month or so. Now, like I mentioned in the last video, my suspicions were correct about Silk Song coming out soon. It's literally coming out in a few days. And because of that, I've decided on delaying Dewdrop until the beginning of 2026. That will allow for enough breathing room and it also will just give me time to make the game that much better. So I just want to give a huge shout out to everyone who gave their feedback and support in that last video. And speaking of support, if you like what you see today, please wishlist Dewdrop Dynasty on Steam as it helps me out so much. I will say that the Steam page desperately needs a new trailer and screenshots, which I'll be doing very soon here. But please check it out if you haven't already. I just localized it to several different languages. And if you notice any mistakes, let me know. And if you want to make games for yourself or you want to learn how to program, then check out a word from today's sponsor, Brilliant. Brilliant helps you become a better thinker and program solver with thousands of visual interactive lessons in math, science, programming, data analysis, and of course, AI. One of the things I love about Brilliant is it helps you build critical thinking skills through problem solving, not by memorization. So while you're building real knowledge on specific topics, you're also becoming a better thinker at the same time. Also, another thing that's become a necessity for me over the last couple of years is being able to learn on your phone or computer. And Brilliant's app makes it easy to learn pretty much anywhere. Whether you're diving into a new topic or doing a quick practice session, you can level up at home or on the go. Now, Brilliant's growing collection of programming courses is a great way to build timeless programming skills to thrive in the evolving world of programming. From learning Python to developing intuition for programming logic, you'll get hands-on experience with real programs and you'll learn how to think like a programmer. To learn for free on Brilliant, go to brilliant.org slash goodgifts, scan the QR code on screen, or click the link in the description. Make sure to use my code to get 20% off an annual premium subscription, which gives you unlimited daily access to everything Brilliant has to offer. So go check it out. If you like this video, check out another one that YouTube thinks that you might like. This, this one's great.